and welcome to SVG TV's News for Friday, January the 24th, 2020. I am Bavin Alvey with the details. As the UK prepares to leave the European Union in a few days' time, there will be increased opportunities for SVG and other countries in the region to forge a closer relationship with the UK. So says British politician Lord Michael Howard, who was the guest speaker at luncheon hosted this week by the SVG Chamber of Industry and Commerce at the Sunset Shores Hotel. The United Kingdom, which has been a part of the European Union for the past 50 years, will leave the Union on Friday, January 31st. Speaking on a topic, leveraging the business relationship between the British Caribbean Chamber of Commerce and the SVG Chamber of Industry and Commerce, Lord Howard said while nothing much will change for the rest of the year, agreements will be made which will be of great significance in the future and that it is his hope that this new era will create a greater tie between the UK and the region. Also during this year, we will be negotiating trade agreements with other countries, with the United States, with countries in other parts of the world. As we speak, there is taking place in London a UK-Africa investment summit, and indeed with the Caribbean. Now, I'm sure you all know about the economic partnership agreement which has been signed between the United Kingdom and Cariforum, the Cariforum countries. Uh, it doesn't change very much from the economic partnership agreement which Cariforum signed with the European Union. And that is, uh, is deliberate. But that is not the end of the matter. That is just the first stage. And it's my open belief, I don't speak anymore for the UK government, as you've heard there was a period when I did, but I don't anymore. You have to, uh, you have to talk to Steve Moore for that. Um, but it is my open belief that this new era, which in a sense begins in 10 days time, but which will fully become operational at the end of this year, will lead to a closer and deeper relationship between the United Kingdom and the Caribbean. Lord Howard said a closer relationship between the UK and SVG will be of benefit to both countries. What an enormous challenge the world faces in dealing with the problem of climate change. We had the uh, opportunity yesterday to visit the site of your geosolar project and that is clearly going to enable you here in St Vincent and the Grenadines to produce a really impressively large proportion of your energy from renewable means. The United Kingdom is virtually alone amongst the large developed countries of the world in committing itself to a target to being um, net carbon neutral by 2050. And um, we are committed the government is committed to working towards that objective and as you move forward towards your ambitious targets in terms of energy production, as we move forward towards our ambitious target of being a net carbon neutral country by 2050, there will be a great deal which we can learn from each other uh, and which we will be able to cooperate closely in achieving. The government of SVG continues to prove that it is concerned about the health of the entire nation. So says Minister of Health, Wellness and Environment Luke Brown during his contribution to the debate on the 2020 budget estimates in Parliament on Wednesday. Minister Brown said tremendous funds have been invested for health care and this year's budget provision for the sector will be no different. Minister Brown pointed out that some pointed out that ger geriatric care is one area which received much attention from the Ministry of Health, with the residents of the Lewis Punnett home being moved to a temporary facility, which afforded them human dignity. He said the 2020 budget provided funding to begin the construction of a new facility in Glen. We're not going to, to fold our hands in 2020 and say our job is done. Of course not, because they are not meant to be there forever. And that is why there's a provision here of $400,000 which is to be used for us to begin the work of demolishing the buildings at Glen, organizing designs for the new building that will take its place, and then further moving in the direction of construction. And the good thing is, Mr. Speaker, is that we already have 
some persons who have expressed an interest in partnering with the ministry and by extension the government on this project for the construction of a new Lewis Burnett Home facility in Glen. So we're looking forward to ironing out the details, working out arrangements, and seeing how we could push forward with respect to that project. The Health Minister further stated that SVG is a pioneer in the area of smart health facilities, one in Georgetown and one in the windward side of the island, and the other in Chateaubelair on the leeward end. He said other areas across the country are earmarked for similar facilities. We became the first person in the first country to have two smart facilities, and now we are turning our attention elsewhere. So in this year, we're going to have it would be celebrated in this case now by the Honorable Member for the Southern Grenadines, a rollout and implementation of smart facilities in the Southern Grenadines, in particular Union Island and Myro, as cases in point. And not to be outdone, his leader, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, is going to have work done on a smart facility. I think it is in Port Elizabeth, in Bekwe. I think some work is actually already going on in respect of that facility. So you see, on one hand, we have a facility in Georgetown. On the other hand, we have a facility in North Leeward. And then we have facilities going all the way down to the Southern Grenadines. This government is interested in healthcare provision throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Brown said some funds have been set aside to conduct some residual work at the Mental Health Rehabilitation Center. Uh, if, I were, if I'm to just make a few highlights from, from that capital or from our capital provisions. We have an amount in here, an amount of $202,000 that is going to be used for the rehabilitation of the mental health center, mental health rehabilitation center. There, there's some work which has to be done out there and in particular, some work with respect to plumbing. Mr. Speaker, you may recall that in December, 2016, we opened the renovated, the upgraded mental health rehabilitation center. It cost the government $4.1 million. But there, there are some residual issues which are attributable to the, the, the age of the building in general, and, and in particular, the plumbing system. So we are going to make sure that that is corrected in this upcoming year, 2020. Meanwhile, Opposition Member of Parliament for North Leroy, Roland Matthews, has been an appeal for more support to be given to traditional marijuana farmers who are desirous of getting involved in the SVG medicinal cannabis industry. He was at the time making contributions to the debate on the 2020 budget estimates. Matthews told Parliament some of these farmers lack the resources needed to thrive in the industry. My fella said that when when Sabi say we go make five, I say nah, you make ten, no, it's fifteen. And then another fellow come back and say no, it's five points that we collect, so I don't know what to believe. Mr. Speaker, with all these monies going around, I am hoping that efforts will be taken into consideration when dealing with the traditional farmers. Because they need help. There are certain conditions that they must meet in order to be growing marijuana for medical purposes is not the same as the traditional marijuana. It's not the same. It's a different process. Some things might be similar, yes, but you're talking about medicinal, and there must be certain guidelines that will incur costs. So I am hoping that some of these monies, because we have, we discussed it, I remember, in, in, in the bill, in, in the bill, and I hope that it will reach down to the traditional farmers in some sort of support. Matthews used the opportunity to appeal to the authorities to compensate Fitzhugh's farmer Hamilton Edwards, whose marijuana crop was destroyed during a police raid. Everybody say, everyone say. So what happened? So are you saying that it's, it's, if, if I am asking, you said a mistake was made, you said people want to get at your government and have no way to cut it down. I am asking you now, based on what we have in the estimate, some sort of help be given to Mr. Edwards, and you are saying it's demagoguery. I am hoping, I am hoping, you know, that what you say there, it, it will happen. I am hoping that Mr. Edwards gets some form of compensation. 
you know, I'm hoping so. Because he worked hard and he spent a lot of money. So have a heart, Mr. Minister of Finance. Have a heart, Mr. Agriculture Minister, when you're begging him for the support to Mr. Edwards. So that he can start again. The North Leeward MP also made another call for the government to assist the fisher folk who suffered losses during the 2013 floods. Yesterday, I met a farmer. He said to me, sorry, a fisherman, a fisherman, a fisherman. He said to me, Mr. Matthews, you know up to now, I have but no help with regard in fishing. He said, I have been around sane since I left school at stage three. That is all my life I know. He came up the ranks until he had his own sin. But now, you know what he has to do? He has to be going with another, another fishing crew to make ends meet. That is all he knows. And he's one of the, the poor who suffered as a result of the flood and was hoping and waiting. So he makes several trips to the fisheries department and up to now nothing. So I am hoping that money that I, that, that I saw in the estimates will go to alleviate the stress, the frustration of some of these fisher folks who are still suffering from 2013. The Diamond community is one of the faster and most developed communities in St. Vincent and Grenadines, which deserves all of its achievements. So says Parliamentary Representative of the South Winland community, Frederick Stevenson, as he delivered remarks at the groundbreaking ceremony of the Diamonds Athletic Track today. Stevenson highlighted some of the projects that have that have are, are being constructed in the Diamond area. Today, more than ever, St. Vincent and the Grenadines continue to propel and to show to the world that we are coming of age. Just to the top of where we are standing here, Pretty soon, you would see the Holiday Inn Airport Hotel. Yes. Yes. Just across the street there, on the top of the, the, the facility here, the athletics track, would be in the region 2020, 2021, 2022, a three million dollar multi-purpose facility for the community of Diamond. The South Women MP said he is very elated to have an athletics track in his constituency. Noting that young people are athletes across SVG will now have a key important facility to enhance their sporting skills. Sports and the development of our young people go together hand in hand and if we want to continue to enhance what we, we've been doing this facility would help to make it even greater. The sports anti-crime campaign which we have launched last year is also very important for the continued development of the young people here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The National Society of the Blind is seeking to become a member of the World Blind Union headquartered in Canada, which is expected to further advance their rights. Recently, the president of the World Blind Union, Charles Massop, was in SVG and met with relevant authorities, including the Voice of the Disabled Organization. Massop pointed out that while SVG has signed on to the UN Convention for Rights of the Blind, the country is still behind when it comes to ensuring the blind fully exercise their rights. Uh, no, matter, no matter what they try to do, they become isolated because they don't have uh, a large uh, resource base. And uh, of course, when I was here in July, had discussions with the Society of and for the Blind, I realized that through no fault of their own, they had become quite isolated. They weren't familiar with uh, the rights and freedoms which have been bestowed on all disabled people, in our case, sight disabled people, uh, because of UN treaties. The World Blind Union has more than 200 members, and Masop said they are making progress to assist the SVG National Society for the Blind 
to become a member. The World Blind Union tries to represent all of them uh, as, as, best, as best we can, and that's why we encourage any interested organizations uh, to join us and be part of the World Blind Union family. And when I was here in July, uh, the organization here in St. Vincent said they were interested. So through the financial support of the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, um, which I've been a senior volunteer with now for 20 years, uh, they agreed to fund uh, a trip back here so I could work with them and get them ready to apply, which they're going to do very soon. Once the National Society for the Blind becomes a member of the World Blind Union, the country will benefit from a number of programs and President of the Voice of the Disabled, Cheryl Adams, says she is looking forward to becoming a reality. So when our children, when our persons are trained, our students are trained, you know, and everyone is being trained with their different skills and whatever, then we can, you know, be sure that we are going to have employment and stuff like that. And another thing we will we learn to is that we would be able to apply for a scholarship for one of our young students. They are coming up fast and they would like to go to study. So once we become a member of the World Blind Union, we would have the right and the ability to sign up. Voting for the Best of SVG, a competition which promotes excellence in local products and services, is expected to come to an end next week, Friday, January the 31st, 2020. Marketing and Advertising Sales Executive of Interactive Media, the entity that is initiated the awards, Latanya Grant, says they are overwhelmed by the response from persons locally and abroad, which augurs well for the finalists and winners. It is not just where you vote online and you share a link and have persons vote for you, but it is also where you get your brand out there, you get your name out there, you basically create a linkage with society, with persons who are here in St. Vincent, but also persons who are outside. Grant said there are 115 categories in the Best of SPG competition. Once selected, the awardees will have much to benefit from. Once you participate in the Best of SPG online, the page stays up for an entire year until we have the Best of SVG 2020. And added to that, when you win, once persons vote for you as the best product or service provider, you will have an opportunity to advertise whether in the Searchlight newspaper or on any media platform saying that you have been the winner of the Best of SVG, which gives you, as I said, more visibility, a wider reach and have persons knocking on your door constantly to find out why you were voted the best.